you there and welcome. This is uh, video one of two. I thought I could fit this into one video, but it, it was just there's a lot of work that went into this more than I realized. So, uh, you know, keep watching, and uh, if you're interested, you'll see video two coming up shortly hereafter. So, um, this is a, a Japanese, or sorry, just a larch and fur. Um, book, uh, boot rack that I made, a shoe rack, essentially. Uh, if you've been following along, you know that we, uh, moved across the country back in July, end of July, and, uh, bought a schoolhouse here in North Idaho. Uh, in doing so, I left a lot of my equipment behind that I couldn't afford to take with me. And, uh, also... It, you know, picked a new, have a new shop, but that shop needs work, and I just didn't have the time or money to uh, to get it up and running yet. So, um, as you can see here behind the work that I'm doing, I have framed walls up over the original brick wall, All right. and we are um, we're using the uh, this gap in time while we're waiting for spray foam insulation to get put in. Um, I went ahead and built this. Uh, for my wife. It's something she's wanted for quite a while um, And it wasn't something I built before we moved because obviously I wouldn't have been able to take it So something I wanted to wait to do until we got out here So there were no building plans for this. I built it out of construction grade uh, for large lumber That uh, I picked up locally here in North Idaho. I did select uh, very straight-grained um, almost almost furniture quality Two by fours. There were, you know, a few in there that I could pull out. So, two by fours, two by sixes, and uh, took them all down. So, um, again, no plans. This was built kind of as I went. Sometimes it's easier to get inspiration uh, for me, anyway, as I build something. So a lot of this was just um, touch and feel as I went. So uh, it's um, an eight shelf shoe rack, and uh, I'm cutting the. Um, legs right now. The legs are two inches wide, inch and a quarter thick. The horizontal shelf supports are inch and a quarter thick and about three inches wide. And uh, this is only the first video, so you'll see the more detailed work that comes in afterwards. So you'll see I'm using my, my job site table saw. Um, I did bring my 14-foot tandem with me. That was actually how we packed to move. Um, as well as my equipment, so I did uh, did manage to bring almost all of my job set equipment, but again, my shop equipment was left behind. A uh, large amount of it was, so I'm kind of working with what I have right now until I am properly set up. So, uh, and another thing is, the, you'll note a lot of the audio is going to be missing, and the reason for that is we again have six children. It, I have the boys up here all the time, sometimes it's just too noisy, and there's no way to filter out that background noise, so, um, unfortunately, sometimes I have to cut out the audio because it's just too sloppy to try to put in the video, so that'll change in the future when I actually have a proper wood shop set up, and I won't have all that craziness in the background, so. So anyway, we're cutting the, I set up a stop block there, and I was cutting all of the, um, all of the horizontals, which are going to carry the shelves, and getting those prepped up for marking tenons. So I'm going to use a marking gauge here and uh, mark the tenons. And again, that the front feet are about an inch and a quarter thick. So I made these tenons um, come out further than that because I wanted them exposed. So the idea is to have the joinery, um, ex you know, exposed tenons. Uh, chamfered coming out of the face of the piece. So I'm just using my marking gauge to score the grain and to get my finished um, finished depth put in there and ready for uh, for sawing. So I just went ahead and kind of sped up the process here. I, I wanted to show it because it gives you an appreciation. This is uh, again, there's 18 or eight shelves. Um, each shelf requires one of these horizontals, um, which means there's 
there are 16 of these horizontals, and both ends get done, which means you have 32 tenons just for the horizontals. So here I'm marking using my marking gauge and marking the end grain, and the reason I wanted to do that is because I'm using a job site table saw for, to saw out my cheeks, as you'll see in a minute. It gives me a finished reference point after I've sawn everything out, so that when I hand work those tenons with my plane and chisels, etc., I have those finished reference points marked and scored to work work down to with the uh, with the hand tools, so that I get essentially identical uh, tenons for all of those. And so here I'm cutting out the, uh, I'm, I'm cutting just shy, about a 30 second of an inch shy of the mortising uh, marking gauge marks that I just did previously. And uh, that's, that's going to remove most of the meat so that I can just do a fairly quick chisel job to get the cheeks cut down uh, smooth. And then, uh, and it also gives me a, that's how I cut the cheeks out here. So, uh, again, I, I probably wouldn't do it this way if I had a proper table saw set up, but I'm using the job site saw. So, I don't mind as long as I have a backer behind the piece. Um, I don't mind doing the cheeks this way. So, this is, again, doesn't have to be hyper accurate. I left about uh, a heavy 16th of material to be removed off of each one of these tenons when I did this. That way if the piece was, you know, skewed n not perfectly 90 when I ran it through like that, I could still, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect the finished tenon. So at the, the end of the day, I could still push those tenons, uh, feather those tenons out with a, with a hand plane and chisels and get them exactly parallel. And so here I've, I've transferred the uh, end grain marks that I've made down onto the uh, onto the tenons here, and I'm just cutting off the, the side cheeks. And as I said, I've got 36 of those to do. really fast at this as you can see all right so we're uh, cutting the cheeks um, pairing the cheeks down now so again the marking gauge line is is just a 30 second or so maybe a little bit heavy um, is still remaining from my original marking gauge mark so I'm just pairing that down and cleaning up the uh, all of the all the cheek faces so we'll have uh, perfect joints when we fit our tenon work together so we had a lot of these to do it took forever so for most of the tool work on this I'm using a Lee Nielsen rabbit and block plane and I'm using a, an old uh, 40s probably 1940s uh, Stanley carriage makers uh, rabbiting plane So just be uh, be mindful if you take on something this scale. It's it wasn't a huge project, but when you take on this volume of joinery, it will blow your mind how how much time it will take. This took this took me weeks, um, not full time, but I mean I was I worked pretty late into the night on it um, around doing other things. So definitely eats up some time. So I just broaden the shot out here, so you can see it's uh, you can still see the original chalkboard is actually behind me there on the wall. So this is literally uh, an old schoolhouse, um, and not much has changed from the original building. 
and we are, uh, I haven't had anything too exciting. I did f do most of the footage for the walls and stuff, but it wasn't exciting enough to put up on YouTube, so, um, as we get into it, there's going to be a lot of, uh, cool work coming up on the channel as we get into it, so, right now, I'm working on more of the rough construction, so. So, back to the project, um, this is, uh, this is how I took out the bulk of the meat on my legs. So I did not have a drill press and uh, quite quite hilariously I ended up this project was so loathsome without a drill press that I went out and bought a new drill press and I ended up finishing the mortising on the horizontals with the drill press um, and a jig just so I could bang them out pretty quick but if you have a self-centering dowling jig like this and a 3 8 inch bit you can you can bore out most of your material pretty quickly like I'm doing here and uh, I've got a secondary board under there as you see and that's to prevent blowout on the back and uh, so this is how I did the legs but I realized um, as you'll see I think in video 2 is where you'll see the, all the mortising I do on the horizontals um, and there's three mortises per horizontal and again there's 16 of those horizontals so it was a lot of mortising um, so I ended up buying a drill press, which you'll see later um, I, in the video, second video I use for the horizontals. And then, even funnier is, after this bookshelf, after this uh, boot rack was done, about two weeks later, I picked up a benchtop square hollow chisel mortiser on Craigslist for like 50 bucks. So it was in beautiful condition. So... It would have been awesome to have had it for this, just for speed, but that's how things go sometimes. So, so I'm paring out my uh, my mortise here, and the, these tenons were half an inch thick, and um, I think two and a half inches tall, two and three quarters tall, I can't remember exactly. Unfortunately, they were through mortises, so, um, and I did use a marking gauge, so you can see there, there's actually a scored set of lines, so it makes pairing pretty easy, and because they're through mortises, I'm not trying to pare down and remove too much material uh, in a boxed area. So here's the uh, first fit, um, and I did pre-fit all of the tenons, so it's not like this is the first time I've <clears throat> put them together. Um, I tested them as I went, I, if I recall. Um, but this is, uh, so I had two of these frames to make because these are the end caps for the shelves. So, and uh, as you watch the next uh, video two coming up after this, you'll see how this all comes together and it'll probably make uh, more sense then. Well, I was pretty happy putting it together. Everything fit beautifully. Uh, my mortises were paper tight. Um, yeah. Well worth the, well worth the work put in. Everything fit together. Um, just, just as I wanted. So the next frame, as I flip this over, it takes some more, more work to get this together because I'm not putting the tenons in individually. I've got a staircase, so this side I'll have to use a, a block and gently, um, gently press it, or uh, could use a clamp as well. So I think the camera makes it deceiving, makes it look like it was pretty hard to get together, but it really wasn't. It was just the just a matter of too many uh, too many tenons all working together to create good resistance to pulling that piece together. So anyway, to uh, conclude, um, 
this is again this is part one of two videos the second video will show the mortise and tenon work that goes into these horizontals they're going to be shaped and they're going to be mortised for through tenons which the shelves are going to have there are eight shelves as you can every one of those horizontals is a shelf and uh, I've got all that work to do and then assembling and uh, gluing and finishing and all the fancy stuff to make it look nice so I've got the two parts here you'll see and uh, look for that in video too so 